It's the Next Level Contractor Podcast. Yeah, I'm talking about Mountain Dews, baby. Coming at you every Monday, 7 a.m. with no bullshit, 30 minutes or less. Eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. We're helping small businesses and contractors be more profitable with better leads and better systems. We'll do it live! Do it live! I'll write it and we'll do it and live! I'm here with David Tall today and we're talking about the lead conversion gap and how businesses need to adapt to changing expectations. How you doing, David? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me real briefly about your company, and then we'll save any pitch for the end of the, the podcast. In the meantime, we're just gonna shoot straight value to the listener. Just a quick, uh, what it is. Sure, uh, well, what we do at Verse is we help uh, businesses engage and qualify their prospects at scale. The idea is to work with businesses that are generating inbound web leads, help, helping them to engage those uh, prospects, qualify them for their sales teams or for, for their own internal teams, and set up appointments um, and to drive higher yeah. conversion uh, for the full yeah. funnel. So you could think of us as a next generation contact center that leverages multi-channel you know, SMS, phone, and email to to engage prospects and move them down the funnel. And just who is it for? Quickly kind of like say what ranges of business, what are they doing? Um, just so people can identify themselves if they're you're in your sweet spot. Yeah, so we work with a lot of the um, companies and businesses and service professionals in the housing industry uh, and beyond, but our 90% of what we do is in the housing industry. So we work with real estate agents and brokers, mortgage companies, um, you know, architects, developers, home flippers, construction companies, roofers, um, you and, know, plumbers. Like you were kind of saying earlier, you were saying like that they have leads between like 100 a, a month to 1,000 a month on average? Yeah, we, we tend to typically come into play um, when companies are generating a couple of hundred leads a month or more. Cool. Um, awesome. That's kind of the sweet spot for our service. Beautiful. So how has consumer behavior changed in regards to when they contact a company, what they expect? Hey, sorry, you were cutting out there. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Um, how has consumer behavior changed when it comes to when they're contacting a company what do they expect? So, you know, th this is something we're pretty passionate about because, you know, the whole, you know, focus on, on what we do and why we are passionate about what we do is about, is really about listening to those changing consumer behaviors and expectations. You know, 15 years ago, you know, when I got start, started as a real estate agent and, and then a broker, I, I saw firsthand the big change in how uh, consumers met uh, businesses. It used to be all face to face. You remember the whole saying location, location, location. That was everything, right? It was all about, you know, you have to have your office on a, on a, on a busy street where you're going to get a lot of visibility and a lot of people are going to walk in. And when I was an agent, I, that's exactly the type of office I chose was a, a office with high visibility with a lot of foot traffic. And that is how I met most of my, uh, clients. Um, but I, I was also, you know, around the time, um, that, that, that the big shift happened where, you know, Zillow and Realtor.com and Homes.com and Redfin and all of these companies came about and started to offer much more uh, information at the fingertips of consumers. Um, so they didn't even need to walk into the office to for me to be the source of all information. They could go online, quickly access all sorts of information. And I started getting more and more leads and prospects online. And so where, where that human connection used to be made right up front, right? Face to face, people walk in, you know, your office, they shake your hand, they greet you, you meet them face to face. You, you make that connection right off the bat. Today, what's happening is all of those people start online. 98% of consumers start their search for a business solution online. And so, Hmm. And so th there's no human connection made. You basically have cold, you know, a, a name, a number, hopefully the right name, the, hopefully the right number, hopefully the right email. And that's all you really have. And now it's up to you to take that. And, and how do you go from cold lead to a warm face to face opportunity to connect? And so and what, I, what I don't like about that, let me just quick like an indictment of modern culture that I, and the problem and I'm an Internet marketing business and we get a lot of our business online. But the hard part is, is like. It's so inhuman, you know what I mean? I don't like sometimes when you have only connected on video chat, how you don't get the feel of the person 
and it is difficult. There's like, there is like, there's a hard part about that. There's like a disconnect a little bit. Absolutely. You know, that, that human connection that used to be made early on in the customer's journey for any service they're searching for, it has really been eroded. And so while, while technology has done amazing things to empower consumers with much more information on the go at their, their fingertips. At the same time, it's eroded that human connection that used to be made up front. Mm -hmm. And now businesses have to chase after those prospects to get to a place where they can build a connection. Yeah. And um, what's been fascinating to to understand and learn throughout this um, you know cycle that's been happening is those changing expectations of how consumers expect to be connected um, to you. Yeah. You know, not too long ago, you know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Um, Consumers expected you to call them. You know, they expected you to call them. Um, and uh, that got so overblown with auto dialers and robocalling. Um, and, and by the way, they used to get offended if you texted them. I can't believe you just sent me a text message. That is such a, a personal <laughs> infringement in my space. That, that yeah. That's costing me a minute of my data plan, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, we're in a different world now where now people are annoyed to hell, if you call them over and over again, they rather you text them, you know, and 98% yeah. of text messages are now read within the first three minutes that you send them, where only eight to 9% mm. of phone calls are ever answered. Um, and what's yeah. happening is that the world of robocalling and auto dialers has made it such a, such an incredibly frustrating um, experience, a point of friction where nobody is answering the phone call anymore from numbers they don't know. They're over it. And the only yeah. way to really cut through the noise and get to the, your consumer and be able to have a, a beginning of a conversation is to leverage the power of texting, of SMS, to, to, yeah. to, to engage with prospects. Um, and now on that point, there are still a, lot, a huge percentage of people still want to get on the phone with you. The question is, how do you accomplish that? Um, and, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we have found, you know, we have tens of millions of conversations with, 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 with clients and with customers for our clients. And what we have found is that 70% or more prefer to text and, and fewer than a third prefer to prefer a call. But if you just started calling that group of 30%, you're going to get very few of them who will actually answer the phone. And so mm -hmm. what we do is, is, and this is what we recommend anyone does at any scale, is leverage texting to initially reach out to a prospect to say, you know, hey, mm -hmm. Tim, you know, David here from Verse, I saw you were interested in our services, um, would love to share more and find some time with you to, to go over what we do. Is now a good time for a quick call or would you yeah. prefer to text? And and good. and what you do there is you you leverage SMS, you leverage text to give the consumer choice um, to yeah. to first of all acknowledge them right away, to be able to respond to them much quicker, make sure that they see your message right away, and then be able to give the consumer choice to communicate how they want to communicate, whether it be text mm -hmm. or, or call, and importantly to communicate on their time and their terms, um, as Love opposed that. to spending hours of your team's time just pounding away with phone call after phone call, just trying to get a hold of them which when you finally do That's good. over a phone call, it is a horrible experience. The person just wants to get off the phone with you. They're annoyed and you kind of lost them already. Um, and so what is, what is like some more context and like phone etiquette once you do get on the call with them? What is what are some principles you've seen that are effective in uh, in those calls if they have expressed some interest in you? The, 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 the single most important thing is is to listen. Um, and, and I know that sounds simple. I'll break it down. Um, so many people out there, once you're on the phone, they're just, tr they're just excited. They finally got you on the phone and they're just trying to tell you all of the things they could do for you. And from a consumer's perspective, that is just the salesiest thing in the world. It's like walking into a car dealership and the guy starts to come to you before you're ready. And you know, you, you mm -hmm. haven't even told him what you're looking for and, and he just starts to bother you. Um, yeah. sorry to all the car dealers out there. You're, it's not all of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Bob from Subaru, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, Bob knows. Anyways. Um, so, <laughs> But, but the idea is to listen. And, and this is, by the way, how we train our own internal sales team, right? Because we use our product on ourselves. You know, leads come in, we qualify them, we book appointments for our sales team. But once they're on the phone with that prospect, it's all about discovery, discovering the pain points and what your customer is really looking for and pulling on the thread. This is a, a, a term we use here is keep pulling on that thread. So mm -hmm. someone may say, 
uh, for example, let's just use a, a, a you know, a, a contractor, a construction company as an example, let's say, you know, uh, they, they get a prospect that's interested in building a, a new, a, a new home, custom home. All right. Um, well, if they start saying right off the bat, oh, we do this and we do that. And we use materials and we're going to save you money and we can do prefab and we can do modular and we can do this and we can do that. And, 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 and I'm going to put solar panels. You know, you're overwhelming the consumer. I'm obviously exaggerating here a little, but yeah. you're overwhelming the yeah. consumer as opposed to the conversation details. should be. That's wonderful. Yeah. Why are you considering building versus buying a, ha- a home that's already built that mm-hmm. you can remodel? Great. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, are, you have a family. Great. How old are your kids? You know, are they going to be leaving the yeah. nest soon? So are those yeah. rooms as important? Is it important? Are they young kids? Do they need space? Do you need to, to build outdoor areas for them to run around? Um, any sports yeah. they're into? You know, do you guys watch a lot of TV or are you kind of a no TV household? Ask the types of questions yeah. that are relevant. Do you spend a lot of time cooking? You, it's all about yeah. gathering as much data to, to, to paint the perfect picture of who you're talking yeah. to and get a really good understanding of, of not how they can benefit you and your business, but how you can best understand what is most important to them in life. That is how you build a connection. And when, when people feel listened to and when you ask all those questions up front and then you can cater your solution and your recommendations directly at each of those um, items that are important yeah. to them. And that is how I think you build trust. And, and when you build trust, the rest comes easy. That's awesome. I love that. And we talk so much about trust because a lot of times we're trying to help people trust your website more because just a real quick side note on trust i think a lot of people do that in conversation particularly in face-to-face conversation very well they know how to create trust they'll quickly uh, especially like you know people that know what they're doing they'll establish uh you know authority by mentioning a few things in a non uh in a non promotional way but they'll mention a few things about them and their company so that people understand and can trust them. It's actually a service to that person. It's not a pride thing. It's just making sure that they understand that you're competent and your company is, does quality work. But they don't do some of those things. They don't share some of those credentials or the important points, the track record. They don't do it as well on their website a lot of times. So we always talk about how you gotta get that out onto the website and make sure that that Uh, is clearly displaying trust and all those things that people need to trust you. Now, I kind of want to get into text etiquette, if you don't mind. Um, If they did say, I just want to stick with text for now, if they choose your own adventure, if they chose that adventure, um, what would you say some principles for making sure your texting is more effective? Absolutely. So, so I have a few, a few, a few items there. First of all, the majority of people, no matter the demographic, by the way, the majority of people prefer to initiate via text. Um, it's less intrusive, and most people are are filling out a form or inquiring while they're at work, while they're busy, while they're on the go, while they saw an ad, while they were on the go waiting at Starbucks, um, or right after they put their kids to bed and they're on the computer and they're filling out forms. It's not like they carved out a bunch of time to talk to you right after they fill out a form. And so um, mm-hmm. and so one of, the, one of the most important things about text is that you're able to start a conversation. And by the way, they can take 10 minutes to respond to each of your questions via text, but it's okay because that conversation can take an hour in relative terms, but can be a matter of five or six texts total by the end of it. But you're doing it in between when they're, when they're able to respond. Most people will, once you're in conversation, will, will get going. But the idea is, is that you're not forcing them to carve out a certain part of their day. And most people are in this world that we live in that is hyper uh, in your face, a million things going on, multitasking like crazy. And they're, they're not able to carve out time. Um, and, and so this cuts through that noise and allows you to start conversations with people and get to the points you need. And, and one of the things I will say about etiquette, the first message you should ever send on text is an acknowledgement text and a text that that offers to call or to text. So, so one of the, the default texts that yeah. we like to send, our system is fully customizable, but what we recommend because it works so well is you acknowledge and you, you offer preference. Acknowledge okay. being something yeah. like, hey, Bob, this is David from blank blank service. Saw you inquired about X, Y, Z. I would love to... Um, chat with you more and and share what we can do and learn more about what's important to you. 
right? That's the acknowledgement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next, is now a good time for a quick call? Would you prefer a call a little later or would you rather chat by text? Yeah, that's good. Right away, you're acknowledging them. You're doing it quickly, hopefully. And then you're saying, you're putting it on them to say, hey, what, what's, what's best for you? You know, and and so giving them the choice and, and you'll find that about a third of them say, yeah, call me. And when you call them, they actually pick up and they're ready to talk and they're happy you did. The, mm-hmm. the two thirds or more, though, that say they prefer to text. You say, great, happy to chat via text. I know it can be a lot easier. Um, let me ask you a few questions and then just ask one question to start. Like how, how long you've been uh, considering uh, building a home? Right. Um, just start with question number one. Right. Um, The whole idea is to is to get them to start to converse with you um, and to share. Um, Go right into something emotional after they start to engage. Well, great. And and, and why? And by emotional, I mean, like motivation. Um, You know what? Well, well, what what uh, what's the main reason you're looking to build? You know, people have a reason. It's important to draw that out. Because then you can um, attach yourself to that motive and show that you care and and you should care. It's not about pretending to care. It's about actually caring Uh, because when you when you when you care, you're going to you're going to create the most impactful connection. I like that, man. So you're saying essentially get to the bottom of their motivation quickly, an emotional motivation so that you can care better. Yeah, exactly. And so that you have something to connect to on it and draw it all down. You should be writing this down, noting it somewhere, either in your CRM or on a piece of paper, on a post-it or wherever, Um, or on your phone, noting it. You know, um, why are you looking for the move? Great. Um, you, do you have a family? You know, um, what, yeah. what, what things about this home you want to build or this roof you want to install, like what things are important to you about it? You yeah. know, is it so it could be let's let's go to a roof example, because that may not seem yeah. like there's emotion behind it. Right. Uh, well, I mm-hmm. just need a roof. Well, you know, how long have you lived in this home? You know, um, it, are you looking to sell it? And so you're trying to kind of upgrade it before you sell it. Or is it because you want long term value or you're considering putting solar panels on it? Um, I'm just trying to get a better understanding so that uh, I make sure I can offer the best the best solutions for you and based on, on what's important to you. Absolutely. So I got one more very, I think it's an important question for a lot of our clients and a lot of the people that I talk to. Um, When you get leads and you've got inbound stuff, one of the biggest problems with all this and one of definitely one of the ones that Verse.io likely helps solve is this idea that qualifying takes a lot of work. (laughs) Qualifying. So I'd love to hear so my I don't actually have a specific question, but I'd love to hear your adventures in qualifying um, and maybe some principles that you've identified either in coming up with your qualifying criteria or how you do that quicker and more effectively. So, so great question because engagement is step one, but then qualification is step two um, to make sure you're spending your time purposefully with prospects that are primed and ready to do business as opposed yeah. to wasting your time inviting someone to a lunch who's never going to do business with you. Um, yeah. And so it's about being really efficient. That's what qualifying is, is all about. Um, yeah. Every customer we work with has a different definition of what a qualified prospect is to them. A roofer, yeah. for example, and, and, and by the way, this is the criteria we take with every customer. A roofer, for example, has criteria around, you know, do you own your home or are you renting? Right? Because you'd be amazed at how many renters inquire about roofing and it's like well i can't help you if you're not the owner you're there i'm qualifying you out of this i need to talk to your owner i know i know your roof sucks and your owner hasn't responded to you but i need to talk to your owner i'm not going to do roofing with you right yeah um yeah so so um you know and and how how long you know how how uh how soon are you looking to to do this if they go well you know a year or two from now you also kind of understand how hot or not they are um well is there an active leak is there urgency to this, right? So, so these are the types of qualifying yeah. questions a roofer may ask. A solar, yeah. a solar installer um, may ask questions like, "What's your current electric bill amount? Um, you know, yeah. Um, um, yeah. do you live in a in a community with an HOA where you might need approval, or is this a single family home that that you can just put put solar on? Have you is started talking to any other trees? solar companies? I was just talking to yeah. a solar installer yesterday. So, 
that idea of if it's covered up by yeah. trees. You live in the middle of, of, a, of, a, of the Amazon, you know, where, where you yeah. know, there's no yeah. sunlight down your home. Yeah. <laughs> so um, those are all really good questions. You know, what's your yeah. what, let me confirm your address um, yeah. so that I can run a quick test and, and look at the kind of uh, the Google satellite view of, of the home to make yeah. sure there's enough square footage. I think. I think people are a little bit scared to just be real with themselves about who they can help and who they can't help and be a little bit more honest with themselves. I think, it, you know, it, it is a sign of a mature professional company, particularly premium service companies uh, that understand that criteria, know what it is for them and are not afraid to turn away business that's not right for them. And I think that that's something that we should all be, you know, I'm in services too, just like a lot of these companies. And it's something that we should all get a lot better at because we know who we can help and we know who we can't help. And we need to stop pretending like we can help people that we can't. Absolutely. And by the way, this is, this doesn't just serve yourself by saving you time. It's a better consumer yeah. experience when you let someone know, Hey, you know what? Th sounds like a great, yeah. a great problem you need to solve. I can't yeah. help with that. I wish I could. Yeah. Um, and maybe you can recommend one or two places for them. And so at least you're creating an opportunity to create a positive outcome out of a rejection. Exactly. Um, don't you wish exactly. girls did that when you ask them on dates? And right now, they, you know, yeah. if they said, well, I definitely don't find you attractive, but I know well, two to three girls here. who would. Let me introduce <laughs> you. So I, I think, I like you know, that. how amazing would that be? So I, I, I'm yeah. just saying from a business point of view, it's not that different. It's kind of like yeah. dating. Um, and, yeah. and, and by the way, Try calling a girl cold. You got to you got to go yeah. on Tinder and Bumble, right? You got to go on apps and. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know anything like about this. Five contacts. Yeah, and, exactly. But 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 my point is 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 it's not that much different um, yeah. than 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 getting getting into a conversation and find finding if there's a viable opportunity to take the relationship any further, um, and yeah. I think it does both parties um, justice and service to to do so. So let's get into a little bit real quick before we. Uh, finish the podcast just about how Verse does that at scale for for companies. Yeah, so so we are a you could think of us as a, a next generation tech enabled contact center. Uh, we integrate with you know for, with companies that have you know uh, a lot of leads. You know we integrate with all of their systems or CRM so that we can ingest their leads and, and receive them in real time. And as leads come in for any one of those businesses. Our, we, 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 we launch a text drip to get yeah. a hold of the consumer. It can take one text, yeah. it can yeah. take 10 or more. Yeah. The idea though is as soon as they engage back and say, hey, thanks for, thanks, I'm, I'm ready to talk. It kicks over to our human team, a real contact center team um, here yeah. in, in sunny San Diego, um, so US based, hey. who carries through a, a guided scripted conversation to, to ask those questions that qualify or disqualify the prospect. And for qualified, and we, and we introduce ourselves as a member of your team, right? So we say, yeah. hi, you know, Alex here with blank, blank construction. Saw you were interested in, in our solution or in our, in, our, in our service. Would love to ask a few questions and um, see if we can help. You know, you yeah. ask them those questions and if you can help, you say, great. It sounds like, you know, we could be a great fit and, and, and opportunity for you. Um, when would be a good time to have you come into the office and meet some of the team and, and dig in it a little deeper together? Yeah. You know, and so we drive to an outcome to uh, book an yeah. appointment um, or a callback time or whatever the case may be for that customer. We have a completely flexible, robust framework to do a lot of things. But from a high level, we can engage with opportunity, engage with cold leads. Um, get the warm ones and book appointments or live transfers or whatever else we need to do. Can you just tell me a really quick story about like a, a customer of your guys's and, and the outcome that they've seen um, from implementing this platform? First of all, it sounds awesome. And, and seriously, it sounds like you guys are doing some awesome stuff. So I just love to hear maybe a little story about somebody um, that you guys have had, have a great experience with it. Absolutely. So we work with a lot of roofers and a lot of roofers are slowly becoming solar installers as well. And so we're working with a company, um, a pretty large solar company who um, does roofing and solar. 
and they okay. generate a lot of leads from organic on their website, Google searches, Yelp, everywhere that they get leads, different lead gen sites for solar and roofing and contractors. And they, um, you know, they have, they have one, one guy who kind of comes into the office from nine to five, um, when he's not sick and not on holidays and, uh, and of course not on weekends. And, any leads that came in, he kind of responds to as quickly as he can, usually within a few hours or a day or two, depending if it's a weekend or if the lead came in at night, gets a hold of about 20% of those prospects after like 10 call attempts. And only a small percentage Oof. of those end up booking a, an on-site appointment with their roofing solar installers to get a quote on-site on their property. Yes. Next verse is introduced. And immediately, the moment someone inquires about solar or roofing with that company, immediately a text goes out um, saying, hey, Bob, Alex here with Blank Blank Solar. Saw you inquired about, about our services. Would love to ask you a few questions and, and see if we can get you a quote. Is now a good time for a quick call or would you prefer to text? 70% mm -hmm. say, say text, 30% say call. But what we do is we get a hold of almost 80% almost 80% of the prospects compared to 20%, okay? Yeah. So we get a hold of far more people, almost four times as many people. We qualify them. We end up out of the vast majority, out of a much larger pool of people we are able to talk to, we we're able to book almost twice as many appointments from the same volume of leads. So, so now their installers are, are giving twice as many quotes every month to people yeah. on site on properties than they were before us with the same lead volume. They haven't started spending any more online. They just leverage the power of instant engagement, of relentless follow up and of multi-channel approach that allows a consumer to communicate the way they want to. And that's what drives all, the, all that. the conversion. It's not. It's not really science. It's kind of logic. But it's 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 yeah. it's that we we enable this and we enable businesses to 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 spark these conversations at the right time, twenty four seven, um, and and achieve the results they're looking for. I love that, man. And it's you'd mentioned something about like um, following the thread or te I can't remember Pulling what you were saying earlier. Really. Pulling, Pulling the thread. Pulling the thread. It's ask I'm and why and if, why, you know? If, uh, if somebody wanted to learn more about that or just straight up, they want to learn more about your platform, they can call your guys' team and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, they can, they can come to verse.io and we promise yep. not to cold call you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can come to verse.io um, and and schedule a free uh, kind of consultation. And and, yeah. our, and our sales reps are, are experts at asking you the right questions, pulling on your thread to understand yeah, what like your that. process is like. And, and we're yeah. honest. Hey, if we can help, we tell you exactly how we think we can help. And if we cannot yeah. help. We tell you. We tell you why. Um, we don't want to like waste that. anyone's time. I like that. And 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 by the way, we're we're technology experts here, so it's very yeah. consultative. So yeah. if we cannot help, we may say, hey, you know what? Um, we could help, but you don't have the the volume that would make yeah. sense yeah. for this investment with us. So. I think you could leverage some of these other tools out there and manage yeah. it on your own to start. Yeah. And once you get overwhelmed and you have a hundred, couple hundred leads a month coming in, let's talk again. And and we're all about all right. just helping helping um, our customers or prospective customers succeed. When they succeed, we succeed. Well, yeah. Sorry, we were breaking up a little bit there, but I just I I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, talking to our folks, and certainly they. I believe that they probably will have learned some awesome things about texting and calling for sales stuff and follow-ups. And uh, just any other things that you wanna share with the, the audience before we wrap it up? Um, you know, um I'm always happy to, you, to connect yeah. with people. If someone wants to find me on Come LinkedIn um, and send me some yeah. messages, I, I like chatting with people. I like learning about different businesses. Um, awesome. Definitely go on verse.io. There's a drop down on the different industries. So if you're in mortgage, if you're in home services, if you're in solar, you can click on that and get more specific content. We have a lot of yeah. fascinating content specific to these different industries like roofing and solar, which will, yeah. um, I think, provide you guys a lot of valuable, uh, your listeners with a lot of valuable information um, just from a benefit perspective without even talking to us. Absolutely. Where can they find you guys on social? Uh, we're, we're on Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. Oh, okay. And if you go to our website, we have all the social links at the bottom. Awesome. Perfect. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a blast. Uh, the, thank you. The podcast is put on by Hook Agency, hookagency.com, Hook Agency all over social. Rate and review us on iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. David, I'd let you pull on my thread any day. Yeah, you know what? I'd love to put a hook on that thread. You got me hooked, so anytime. Yes, I like it. See, hey, we're, we're punching for each other. I like it. Well, hey, man, I hope that you have a great day, and uh, th um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, too, Tim. Cheers. Bye. Bye.